Tony alluded to that. It's like a man himself. Lots of hope at the start of the season. Oh, and it's a giveaway ball. And it's a chance for Barlow to make the opening score. Oh, that's terrible defending. And in nips, Caleb Barlow, the 20 year old, to score his third goal of the season. Well, it was like a bit of training ground match for Sharma Grovers until that big mistake allowed him Barlow. Still had work to do, but he tucked it neatly past Alan Manis and Sligo take the lead. We just mentioned it been a little bit casual for Sharma Grovers. Love is certainly casual on that occasion. You've got a huge credit to, credit to Barlow here. Now, the way he's nicked the ball, composure's got to run over 40, 50 yards on the ball. Gets his head up. Have a look at the goalkeeper. Look at that head. Finish. Straight out of the top draw. Great composure from that young man. Shows a lot of interest. He's going to nick the ball, gets his head up, knows what he's doing, knows where he's putting that ball. It's a wonderful finish. Shamrock Grover's now a little bit stunned and got to get themselves going. That's rather unlike Pico Lopez, the Cape Verde international, to be that lax. Finger. It's a nasty injury for the crowd. He's not able to fully extend the finger at all. Here's Ferrugia. Gaffney. Pulled the ball and went to his left foot, but didn't work. Nicked off his toe, and now a chance for Sligo to break. Still retained possession of the ball. The flares going off behind that goal. It's a chance, and Manis has to make the save from Hartman, who's come in from that right hand side to the left hand side. It opened up nicely for him, but he just didn't have really real much purchase on the shot. There's just no pressure on the ball either, is it? I mean, have a look at the Shamrock Rovers players, all very much passive standing off, and Hartman's run all of his players. 56 yards. Johnny Kenny had run to an offside position, so he plays in Burke. Burke now into Kenny and Gaffney. Here's Gaffney. Well, the keeper did well, spread himself nicely. Tries a shoot for Burke. He's got 11 goals this season. Gaffney. Oh, he's missed it. There was all sorts going on there. Keeper did well. Gaffney missed it. Burke shot. And this is the breakaway when Graham Burke gets Gaffney away. A little bit of a mistake when Gary Buckley gets drawn in with the keeper. Wonderful save. Closes down the angle. Then it comes out to Graham Burke. Manages to get another strike away. And once the deflection comes to Gaffney, I don't think he's expecting it. It's difficult. He's got to get it out of his feet. Get some sort of a little excellent toe poke year. at it. Lopez clearly grace all the way capable of getting goals in this position. Burke takes it towards the penalty spot. Yeah. How did that stay out? I think there's a header from Cleary. It must have deflected off one of the Steiger Overs players out for second consecutive corner. I think it's Cleary's header. Look at it again. I think they're going to get crazy, the at half time now and see if they can iron out a few problems. Here's Kenny. He's got Burke alongside him now. Should be great. Burke's ball. Oh, oh he's going to give him the big finish. And he wraps his jersey over his head. They've had a couple of chances in this first half. That was the easiest one. That's a bad miss. But that's his one player. John, I wouldn't expect to miss. It would be Graham Bork. And you have a look at John Kenny once he breaks down the left hand side. Doesn't look confident to me to go himself. He's always looking to get his head up and offload. And to be fair to him, he does that really well. Puts it on a plate and Graham Bork gets his head up. Just slots it to him. And that man, considering the quality that he has, you'd expect that to go on the back of the net. And that really just sums, <laughs> sums up Shamrock Rovers in this first half. The time. Yeah, that's the big nearly there. Yeah, one minute. Gaffney. Here's Burke. Can he get the equaliser? Burke! Well, they got the goal, but it was deflected. <laughs> that's a sense of relief for Graham Burke. That's his 12th league goal of the season. Quick breakaway, Sligo got caught the hop, and Burke puts it to the back of the net for a deflection, 1-1. Well, I'll tell you what, this goal is all I know. John Kenny's run for me. Spoke about maybe not being too confident in front of the goal, but his running off the ball is always exceptional. And once that man Gaffney picks the ball up, he's got space ahead of him. We'll have a look at the run from Kenny, taking defenders away, giving Graham Burke that 10-yard space, which you should not give that player. And once he gets on to his left foot, looking to make amends from the previous chance he had, just gets himself composed. Does get a little bit of a deflection. It sticks it in the back of the net. I wonder if it's going wide. I don't think so. Well, you never know. It's John Mann, the unfortunate defender that it came off. He just tried to throw his chest on that. O'Neill. Here's Burke. Score of that late equaliser in the first half. Oh, dipping and 
defending all the time. Good effort by Ferrucci. He's claiming a corner. Moore's out there trying to back up his teammate, but it was a good effort from Ferrucci. Just wide. Yeah, I think it certainly might have gotten the deflection or it was a more and maybe we kind of close it down the number eight. Just see a little bit of a deviation in the path of it. Much more like him, Shamrock Rovers, and start, starting the second half really well, moving the ball brightly. One touch, two touch football. Have a look at it yet. Yeah. Certainly does get a deflection. You, you can hear that. I mean, you're out in the middle. The referees, you can hear that. This isn't a good position right. for him so being a right footer. Just the left hand edge of the penalty area. Chance, perhaps. But Rovers in front. Walsh takes a couple of steps off his line. Oh. And can do nothing about it. Lovely finish from Dylan Watts. Watts took a couple of steps off his line. Ball up and over the wall. Nesses himself nicely in the back of the net. And Rovers have turned it round. It's Shamrock Rovers 2, Stogger Rovers 1. Oh, well, I have to say, that's one thing that's been a real bugbear of mine for the last few years is people that just can't stick them in the back of the net. Free kicks. This is absolutely exceptional. Look at the way he gets that up and down, the height he gets on it because the wall jumps as well, but it's still, it hasn't even gone to the top corner. It's wonderful technique and pace, all just perfect. Keepers, no chance. It's a wonderful strike, Dylan Moss, just what we needed. Dylan Watts makes it 2 1. So he's in a very That's outside of his position. Uh, the top three teams. Shelburne are now still in fourth place. Better goal difference than Bohemians. But at the other end, it's simple as you like. And he's only on the pitch a matter of minutes. Aaron Green chips it over. Connor Walsh. And it's 3 1. We're in the 59th minute. That's yeah, way too easy, isn't it, really? Just no pressure on the ball here from Sligo. They've completely gone missing in this half. Greg Budger loses the pass. And once Ferruzzi picks it up, look, all he wants to do is run with it. No pressure. Mahan stands off, stands off. And then once he offloads it, Aaron Green, it's a dink of a finish. It looked a bit odd from up here. What way he finished this? Pass from Perugia, perfectly timed for Aaron Green, knew exactly where he was. He's just a little caress of a finish over the advancing Walsh. Not much you can do, but you have to wonder what's happened, happened to Stigo second half. That pressure, that good pressure we had in the first half is all but gone. Certainly Shamrock Rovers now making huge amends for their lackluster first well, so half. They'd the have to win the cup, wouldn't they? Yeah, they'd have to win the cup to qualify. Perugia, book is coming to meet him. Lovely inside the penalty area, it's got to be Kenny. Oh, took too long on it, but not Dylan Watts. That's his second. Walsh did everything he possibly could, but he couldn't keep out Dylan Watts. Kenny hesitated too long. Walsh saved it, but in the end, he couldn't prevent Watts scoring a second goal and making it 4 1. To taste that man for Uja down this right hand side. Once it comes into him, and a little around the corner, fast and Gaffney, loads of time and space. But have a look at this for a cheeky little around the corner. Gets his head up, puts it on a plate for John Kenny. He needs to hit that first line, no doubt about it. Just confidence not there at the moment. Looks like the chance is gone, but once Dylan Ross picks it up, gets his head up and drives it down right through the couple of Sliger Rovers players. Not the most. Finesse is a finish, but he gets a wonderful strike on it. Keeper can't do much about it. Too close range. Sligo Rovers are all over the place at the moment now. His body language is awful, but considering how well they had played in that first half. Watts has been very good since he came on. Scored a brace as well. Nice interplay in the edge of the area. Opens up for Gaffney. Gaffney, still Gaffney. <laughs> he knows he should have scored. Oh, I just wonder, could he have even as fast as to John Kenny? It's a lovely little pass from Kenny to Garen Green. Slide through fast down to Gaffney. Can he just put it on a play for John Kenny? Look, John Kenny saying, give it to me. Give me a goal. He does accept me well, Gaffney. You might give huge credit to the goalkeeper, actually, just to close down that, close down the angle when he checks in. Sean Rovers are just kind of creating chance after chance now. Sligo. But it's all there, black and white. Hartman away here now, right hand side. I like the cut of this gym. Hartman, he's going to shoot, is he? Hartman! Oh, lovely goal. 4 2. He 
very clever that was just beat the two defenders could have had a shot for his time but the defender was closing him down so he just waltzed past him planted to the bottom corner it's one of the goals of the night it's four two he was standing free for such a long period of time and once he picks it up down the right hand side you know he's always going to get it onto his left foot he just dummies that second run decides to kind of cut it back beat poles instead of going for the far corner and spoke with him in the first half lovely feet and lovely balance about him he's taken it goal extremely well and all of a sudden Sligo gives them something to hope for see from the celebrations not too many players going over to him to celebrate with him league titles in a row and it's nice to be here they have to talk about it and to play in the backdrop of this wonderful stadium that has been developed over the years and it's an exceptional achievement for this uh, football club there goes the final whistle uh, we're not quite done yet we'll be doing the tot uh, total presentation very shortly referee Damien McGrath ends the contest and it's finished Peter Collins Shamrock Rovers four Sligo Rovers two Thank you very much to John and Stuart on commentary for us this evening. So the celebrations can begin in earnest now for Shamrock Rovers. Four and in a row. Emulating the Hoops team of the 1980s. Last one in 1987. Pat Byrne brought the trophy onto the pitch for the current but soon to depart. Shamrock Rovers captain Ronan Finn and he raises the trophy to the air to declare Shamrock Rovers for the fourth year in a row the champions <laughs> well, you can get used to winning Stewie can't you you can get used to winning no, there's not a better feeling John exactly it becomes a it becomes an addictive habit to be quite honest and I, sp I spoke about the baton being passed the baton is now being passed to this team this the wonderful achievement of Shamrock Rovers in the 80s is something I grew up with these wonderful stories about this exceptional team we're now seeing in the flesh this current team has matched that Ronan Finn holds the trophy aloft Shamrock Rovers are the champions for the moment though we're going to take a break from time